To explain the present tenses, I would ask you first to take a piece of paper and draw two lines through the middle, one from top to bottom and the other from left to right. You end up with a grid split into four sections. You are going to write one sentence in each square describing number one, something you do every day. Number two, something you are doing right now. Number three, something you did in the past at an unspecified time. And number four, something you started in the past that you are still doing now. Here are my examples. I eat breakfast every day. I'm looking at a computer screen right now. I have swum with sharks. I have been living in Asia for 10 years. Those are the four present tenses in English. We say that there are 12 tenses in English. They are divided up like this, three times past, present and future, four aspects, simple, continuous, perfect and perfect continuous. If you want to do well in IELTS, it's really important to know these tenses. However, if you find some of them very difficult, don't worry. It has been estimated that present simple and past simple make up 80% of the language. In IELTS, you will commonly be asked about your past, the present, and only some basic plans for the future. So you don't need to know all the tenses perfectly. Here's a table explaining how the tenses look. Now let's look at the present tenses. In any of the tenses you can form positive, negative or interrogative sentences. Interrogative means question. Note that in written English we usually write do not and does not. However, in spoken English this is contracted to don't and doesn't. In the IELTS exam, you should try to follow this rule. The present simple is very common tense and it has many uses. Here are some of them. Routine actions. Facts and permanent situations. Directions or instructions. When using the third person singular, meaning he, she, or it, you must add an S to the end of the verb. However, there are a few rules about that. Generally, you just add S to the end of the base form of the verb. If the verb ends in a Y, you should remove the Y and replace it with an I before adding ES, like this. If the verb ends in one of the following, you should instead add ES to the end. O, S, Z, X, CH and SH. When the third person singular is used with an auxiliary verb, such as do, as in the negative or interrogative form, the auxiliary takes the S and so the main verb doesn't need it. For example, we don't say, does he walks? We say, does he walk? We don't say, he doesn't walks? We say, he doesn't walk. The present continuous is sometimes called the present progressive. However, as most textbooks refer to it as the continuous, I will use that term here. It is formed by using to be and then the verb plus ing. 
Again, be careful of contractions. In writing, we would say are not, but in spoken English, it is more common to use aren't. There are many times when we could use the present continuous. Here are some of the common instances. For an action that is happening as we speak. For something that is ongoing, but not necessarily happening right now. To describe a developing situation. Referring to a regular action. Numbers 1 and 2 from the previous list often confuse students. The first one is straightforward. I'm reading a book could mean that I'm holding a book and actively reading it at the moment of speaking. However, if I read a book every night before bed, I may also say I'm reading a book. Think of it this way. Imagine you're sitting at dinner with a friend and talking about your life. You haven't seen each other in a while, so you want to catch up with some general information about your lives. You tell her some things about yourself. I'm not studying to be a vet anymore. I changed my major and now I'm studying to be a dentist. My brother is going to night school to train for a new position at his job. I'm reading a really wonderful self-help book. All of these are true and all of them use the present continuous, and yet none of the activities described are happening right this now. It may sound like you can describe any action with the present continuous, but this isn't true. There are actually many non-continuous verbs. These are generally verbs that describe states or feelings, the sorts of things you can't really see someone do. They include prefer, hate, wish, love, remember, believe, imagine, know. For example, a person might say, I believe in God. However, they can't say, I'm believing in God. The next present tense is the perfect. As we saw in the main verb tense table previously, it is formed with have or has and the past participle form of the verb. The present perfect can be a little trickier than other present tenses, so let's look closely at three of its uses. Number one, a finished action or state that occurred at an indefinite time in the past. I have been to France. She is eaten sushi. They have learned Chinese. Each of these actions occurred, but we don't state exactly when they occurred. This use is very common, but also quite vague. It could refer to an isolated event that is either long or short, or something that happened repeatedly, or something that was true over a long period of time. Basically, it refers to something that definitely has happened, and no particular time is stated. Number two, something that has happened in the past, but may happen again in the future, because the time period is not yet finished. It has rained today. She has had four coffees this morning. They have been to the office twice this afternoon. In each of these situations, there is a time period that is still continuing. Today, this morning, this afternoon. And although the actions have already occurred, they may be repeated again. For example, in the first sentence, it has already rained, but it might rain again. Number three, similar to the previous rule, present perfect can also be used for events that started in the past and may or may not be continued into the future. We've lived in Beijing for six years. They've been a couple since 2012. I've worked in finance for almost a decade. Notice the use of since and for. We often use these with the present perfect. For is followed by a period of time. For five months, for two days, etc. And since is used to refer to a point in time. Since last Friday, since 1998.
and so on. As the name suggests, this tense includes elements of the perfect and continuous tenses. Namely, it includes both have or has and the past participle been, plus the verb plus ing. It looks like this. This tense is less common than the previous three and has a more specific application. Number one, for describing an ongoing activity and the length of time that it has continued. I've been learning Spanish for six months. We've been dating for two years. They've been caring for that sick dog since last Monday. Number two, it is used with the present simple to explain the current situation. I'm tired because I've been looking after the baby all day. She's hungry because she's been dieting recently. We're broke because we've been spending too much money.